All right, just a kind of random update. Um, try to keep it short, but I'll see where it goes. Um, so 72 hours, give or take a few hours, is about how long um, it took me to get from taking the sugar for hypoglycemia back into like a steady ketosis state um, with the carnivore diet. So this was my reading this morning. You can see the time, 9.38 a.m. Um, and this is what it generally looks like on the carnivore diet when you're in ketosis as a type 1 diabetic. It's a very stable line. Um, you don't have to do too much to keep it there either other than just keep the discipline of the diet. Um, but so about 72 hours ago, uh, I told you on the first carnivore video that um, I had hypoglycemia in the morning. It was pretty stubborn. So basically what I did was I woke up, it was going low. It wasn't going low super fast, but it, I could definitely feel it. So normally what I do when I'm on a low carb diet is I, ha I start with a very small amount of glucose. If it's not a severe hypoglycemia, in other words, it's going down very quickly. So I ate like maybe two or three Smarties just to see if that would bring it up. Blood sugar still kept going down. So I ate the rest of that package, just one package of Smarties. That did nothing. It was still going down. So I think I ate um, two more packages of Smarties. Still did nothing. And that, this is very odd because normally when you're low carb and you have low levels of insulin, very small amounts of glucose can bring you back up to normal. But for whatever reason, and this is just part of being type 1 diabetic, this time it was not working. It's just random. It could be hormonal. It could be you know, delayed effects of um, stomach emptying, like gastroparesis. It could be t delayed effects of exercise. Really hard to tell. So um, then I got serious about it because obviously I didn't want to pass out. I mean, that's life-threatening. So I had a half a soda, um, Canada Dry, and two mini candy bars, like mini Snickers, um, left over from my kid's Halloween. And um, that did it. It took about, on average for me, it takes about 10 minutes for anything I ingest orally in terms of glucose to get into my bloodstream. This took about 10 to 15 minutes. And initially, it didn't raise too high. It went into like the mid-150s, somewhere around there. But then it just shot up. I mean, like a rocket. It was like upper 300s, which is to be expected. It's a rebound. Um, and they call those rebound highs for a very good reason. So the amount of carbs I had, it really wasn't that much. I would say probably less than 100 grams. Um, I'm not going to go through and calculate it, but most likely less than 100 grams. But my chart, if you can see my mouse, so instead of being sideways, it was kind of low, low, low went under and then rocketed up. And then I took a correction dose of insulin and it came back down. But then I was kind of hovering high for like the next day and a half. And then I slowly came down. And then, like I said, 72 hours and I'm back to a more normal flat line at a more acceptable level. So that is without a doubt, one of the most frustrating things about doing low carb as a type one diabetic, because it's almost like being forced to cheat. It would be just like somebody like sneaking up behind you and shoving a piece of cake in your mouth and then running away and you're stuck dealing with the, uh, the after effects of it. So, um, not fun for sure, but I just wanted to go over some things because I think Again, one of the advantages kind of of being type 1 diabetic is you can see different things in real time because you don't have your body making insulin. So you see all the real effects of what you're doing, how much insulin you have to take, how long it takes to get back to a certain level, watching your blood sugar just with exogenous insulin. So, um, and that goes along with things that I've experienced in the past. Right around that 72 hour mark, like three days it takes to deplete muscle glycogen and get back into a ketosis state. Um, one thing that I think I did that was probably a little overboard is I did too much exercise. That can be counterintuitive because you think, okay, doing a lot of exercise, you're gonna deplete muscle glycogen quicker. But for me, I think, if you go a little bit too extreme with the exercise, 
you can affect like stress hormones and glucagon and there's a whole bunch of different things that go on when you exercise other than just burning calories. So I think if I had it to do again, um, which I will, I would exercise a little bit less intensely and not quite as much, maybe stick to a more stable routine and um, do it that way. I think I would have had better results Uh, maybe got back into ketosis quicker if I had done it that way. One thing that I've noticed is that if you're doing low intensity exercise, like walking, and this is just my layman's observation, I'm not going to go into the science of it or whether, or the research, but when you're doing low intensity exercise, you're basically burning first the glucose that's in your bloodstream. And then you're going to start to burn more of your body fat because you're not getting the the glycogen burst from like doing like a HIIT workout, a high intensity workout. So when you do a high intensity workout, your body wants to shuttle glucose into your bloodstream to burn. And that's where you get blood sugar spikes. So you're not really burning body fat, you're burning stored muscle glycogen and liver glycogen, which is sugar in your blood for fuel. Now, if you're in a keto- ketosis state, you're just going to be burning whatever sugars you have, and then you're going to be burning body fat. Um, So if I want to lower my blood sugar, one of the best ways to do it is simply low intensity exercise. It just burns that blood that, or that burns that sugar that's available. So just for curiosity, while we're talking I want to look and just see if there's anything good in terms of average time of depleting muscle glycogen. So so this says, we know muscle glycogen storage can be depleted rapidly. We also know this will cause fatigue to develop quickly. Say after approximately 80 minutes of exercise at maximum lactate, steady state glycogen stores are depleted. Let's see. That's not really consistent with what I'm looking for. Okay, so they're talking about muscle glycogen, maybe in terms of like, um, you know, the classic bunk, if you've ever heard that term, like hitting the wall when you're exercising. Um, But I'm more talking about systemic glycogen, not just muscle glycogen. I'm not sure I could find a good result for that. Let's see. but I thought this might be something different to to kind of do research together and look at what we find. And some of these, these are going to be too, maybe too specific, too complicated for the basic information that I want. saying they're bad studies, but I'm looking for something so it depletes muscle glycogen most quickly. Yeah, so this is uh, high intensity workouts are most efficient at burning away more total calories, both glycogen and fat calories. Um, and that goes along with what I was saying about High intensity workouts, um, it wants to give you that glycogen spike for glucose. And I think for me as a type 1 diabetic, now if you're not type 1 diabetic, um, getting back into ketosis quickly by doing 
high intensity exercise and then also low intensity exercise might be a good way to go if you're interested in doing it quickly. But for me, I think it alters my blood sugar too much by having these glycogen spikes. So I think for me, taking my time and going slowly and doing more low intensity exercise would be much better. Um, also, again, not having to take more insulin for corrections and um, risking another hypoglycemia, which would go back into the whole cycle. So, um, yeah, in terms of, let's see, instead of muscle, I'm going to just do systemic and see what I find. Oh, that's a good one. So the hepatic glycogen, which hepatic is liver. Well, I'm not going to read that whole thing, but you can see in the summary here, depletion of hepatic glycogen occurs over a period of 12 to 24 hours, though this varies greatly with activity levels. So that makes sense. And I'm probably an outlier because there's so many different things with type 1 diabetes that are different that, you know, maybe that 72-hour mark has something to do with taking exogenous insulin or how I store glycogen, but that definitely makes sense. So muscle glycogen, obviously much more related to the type of workout, duration of workout, et cetera, and then to get rid of you could say hepatic or systemic, you know, the glycogen within your entire body, um, 12 to 24 hours. So I'm probably more sensitive, like a normal person might be in ketosis after that 24 hours, back in at least a low level of ketosis. Whereas for me, it might take a little bit longer just based on random things that maybe I don't know about or no one knows about really. So um, that was just a quick update. Um, thought it might be good to talk about some of those things since um, we're in the holidays. I know a few people have done videos on, hey, I, I cheated, which I don't really call it cheating. You just made a decision or, you know, it's your life. I don't, I don't guilt myself or other people for choosing to have some pie over the holidays or something. But um, some people are making videos about how they had sweets over the holidays and what it was making them feel like and getting back back on track and back into ketosis. And since um, I had something like that, just because of low blood sugar, I figured kind of a real world example of it might be helpful to anyone, not just for the holidays, but anytime you cheat. I mean, be easy on yourself. It only, I find it only goes against you to make yourself feel guilty or beat yourself up about, oh, I was on this great diet and, you know, I, I caved in. It is so difficult. You're going to have moments where you're around people, you're in a situation, or maybe it's late at night and you're by yourself. Who knows? And you're going to have a craving. You're going to have a craving for all different, like the name of my, my channel is Steam White Rice. I absolutely love Steam White Rice. If I could cheat and have something, at this particular moment, it would probably be something with steam white rice, maybe like sushi or something like that. So there's always going to be something that's going to tempt you. But again, in my situation, the pain that I undergo physically and the risks that I have physically from doing that, almost always, I'm not going to say always because I will cheat. There will be a time when I'm like, you know what, I'm going to have something sweet. Or I'll have low blood sugar and that'll be my opportunity to have something sweet. But you will have moments where either you decide to or you fall off the wagon or whatever, you're going to eat something sweet. Just go right back to what you're doing. Again, that's why that's part of the reason I'm posting this video is because let's just say it takes 24 hours or 72 hours to get back into it. You're still so much better off by taking care of yourself. Just think what you were doing before. Every day was a cheat. Every meal was a cheat. Now maybe you have one cheat a meal or one cheat meal in a year. 
two cheat meals in a year. I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying I should. But for instance, me saving my life by having sugar was a necessary thing. There's nothing I can do about it. So just deal with it and keep going. I'm still better off every day that I get back to what I was doing and have stable blood sugar. So I think I'll leave it there. Let me know if you like this kind of format. I'm not a super YouTuber, as you can tell by my videos. I'm going to try to get things better. Um, I'm going through things with pain from my disability and um, also some vision stuff. So I'm trying to get better at the YouTube to concentrate more, but concentration is one thing that I'm having a bit of uh, trouble with, just kind of keeping with things. So hopefully, I, not hopefully, I will get better at making videos as time goes on. But right now it's kind of bare bones. I just want to make content, get things out there, even if it's not super high quality, production quality, um, that kind of thing. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate some of the comments I've gotten on other videos, um, all the likes and the views. So thank you again, and uh, I will talk to you soon for another update.